AI has completely revolutionized the software development landscape. And with that change comes a massive opportunity, not just in what you can build, but how you can code and how even how fast you can learn to code in the first place. Now, while everybody's freaking out about AI stealing programming jobs, let's be real. That's probably not happening anytime soon. But here's the truth. A developer using AI could take your job. So if you want to be a programmer or you're already a programmer, it's critical that you stay on top of these tools that make you productive in 2025 and beyond. And that's exactly what I'm going to show you in this video today. My top five AI coding tools that every developer needs to know. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory from DAP University and I'm a blockchain developer. That's what I teach on this channel. So if you want to be at the forefront of technology, building full stack applications with blockchain and even AI, then make sure you subscribe to the channel and smash that like button down below. And if you like what you see in this video today and you want to see how to increase your income by becoming a full stack developer who concentrates on blockchain and uses AI, I can show you how to do that step by step from start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's get into this. Let's talk about the top five AI tools that you need to know. Now, if you're just getting into AI with software development and trying to put the two together, you've probably done the obvious thing, which has gotten on something like ChatGPT or Claude or Grok or whatever you like to use and just, you know, chatted with it and basically is like, hey, I'm either trying to build this thing or maybe you copy and paste some code in there to say, hey, fix this or add a new feature. You know, that's a valid way to use AI for programming. And I do this a lot. And sometimes it's my preferred method because I don't want to pull all these AI tools into my project when I'm working on something. But if you want to take this to the next level, that's really what the tools are about that I want to show you right now. All right, so the first tool on the list is Bolt. This is one of the fastest ways that I've ever seen to basically take your idea in your head and actually turning it into a working project on your screen, okay? So normally starting a project is a slog. You've got to spend hours setting up the repository, picking your framework, pulling in libraries, writing boilerplate code, and just getting to the point where you can actually start building real features. But Bolt flips this entire process on its head. You literally just describe what you want in this box right here. Say, you know, build me a React app with authentication. All right. And let's say you want to add a dark mode toggle and a blog section. And you can describe all that here and just click start and Bolt will generate the entire project for you and the directory structure in less than a minute. We're talking about, you know, actual files and folders, not just snippets of code, but a full blown starter app with routing UI components and even some placeholder content. And it's not just a one stop thing. Like basically you can iterate on it. If you want to add a dashboard with charge, you can do that later. Now, what do I personally like using Bolt for? Now, you know, you're probably not going to build a massively sophisticated application with something like this. Again, you know, the whole point is to just help you get faster as developers. This is good for smaller self-contained projects, or you can do what I personally really like to use this for, which is to create front-end applications. Now, again, I'm a blockchain developer. That's primarily what I teach on this channel. I do focus on full stack development, and I like to focus on the back end of things most of the time. That's just kind of where my expertise primarily lies, and I don't want to spend a ton of time coding out front-end applications. And and so what I'll do is spend a lot of time coding out the back end of the application on the blockchain with smart contracts and then use Bolt to quickly spin up a user interface that looks nicer than something I could think of myself so I don't have to hire a designer or buy a UI template or just try to figure out what looks good and then use the AI to help build the bridge between that front end and the back end. And if you want to check Bolt out, you can go to bolt.new. You click on the gallery section to get some inspiration or to start building your application by describing it here. All right, so the next one on my list is GitHub Copilot. All right, now there's a lot of different applications that do what Copilot does. I'll make a mention of those here in a second, but let's talk about briefly what GitHub Copilot is and why it's important. So basically GitHub Copilot is an OG in the space. And honestly, it's still one of the most important tools that you can have in your developer toolkit. Think of it as like a true pair programmer that sits quietly in your editor until you need it. But instead of like a person standing over your shoulder pointing things out, Copilot actually suggests entire code blocks as you type. So you might have seen like in an editor, if you have tab to completion on some common pattern, like a lot of IDEs will have this built in, but this is just like next level. It'll auto complete like entire functions for you or say like you're writing a regular expression that needs to validate an email address. It'll just spit it out because it's trained on all the code that's up in the cloud on GitHub already. But it doesn't just stop at small stuff. All right. You can write a comment that's like, you know, create a function that fetches user data from an API and tries to retry on failure. And boom, it'll just do all that stuff baked in. And where this really shines again is not to just replace you writing all the code, but speeding up repetitive, boring tasks that developers hate. That's the whole point of AI in the first place, because like we're coders, we want to be coders. They still need us. 
but we want to get away from doing the grunt work that we might want to delegate to somebody else. And in this case, the AI does that. Doing stuff like writing boilerplate routes, handling errors, converting objects, or generating tests. Like those are things that eat up so much time and Copilot makes them almost instant. And here's the important part. Like using Copilot doesn't make you a worse programmer, it makes you a faster one. You're still responsible for understanding and verifying that code, but instead of spending all your mental energy on syntax and boilerplate, you can spend your time focusing on solving the real problems. And in 2025, the developers who will thrive will be the ones who learn to collaborate with AI tools like Copilot instead of just ignoring them. All right, so the next two on the list is Cursor. All right, so we talked about Copilot, which really is like a plugin that you can put into any code editor. So Cursor is sort of the next thing. Basically, it takes everything we've been talking about, AI autocompletions, repo search, refactoring, and builds that into an entire editor. So it like replaces VS Code or Sublime Text or like whatever editor you like to use, okay? So unlike VS Code though, which had AI added as an extension, Cursor was designed from the ground up with AI at its core. So basically that means you can like literally highlight some code and hit a button and ask it to explain or refactor or even rewrite the code in any new style, right? So you can say like convert this JavaScript function to TypeScript with proper types and it'll do it instantly. Or like add comments to this function so it's easier for junior devs to understand. It's not just autocomplete, it's actually interactive collaboration. Now, the real magic is when you start using cursor to generate new files and features. Like let's say you're building an Express API and you can tell Cursor, like, hey, add this new endpoint for the user uh, to actually register, and it'll just spin up the controller, the routes, and even the tests, all right? And because Cursor is tied to your entire repo, it understands the context, like your naming conventions, uh, your dependencies, your structure, and it even feels like working with a teammate who's been on the project since day one. So for productivity, that means less time digging through the docs and more time shipping features. All right, so the next one is SourceGraph, okay? So what is this about? And actually, Cody is really the name of the tool, but it's put out by SourceGraph. So it's a tool that you need when the entire code base is so big, you're trying to wrap your head around it. So you might have seen this, like sometimes you're working on small projects that really one developer can handle. But like, what if you're on a project that requires like 20 developers? Well, you got to ask this person, ask that person. And sometimes the knowledge, like sometimes like no one person even knows how the entire app works. So basically, every my new developer joins the project. They're trying to understand this thing for weeks. And like traditional search tools can only get you so far. But they don't understand um, the meaning of your code, these tools, right? But Cody solves this problem. It lets you literally chat with your repo. You can ask things like, how does the authentication flow? to the system, where's the function that handles the password resets, and Cody will give you a contextual answer with links straight to the code base. It's a lifesaver for the enterprise projects, legacy code bases, or even open source repos with thousands of files. And instead of reading documentation that's always out of date, because everybody knows it's a pain in the butt to keep documentation up to date, or worse if it's non-existent, uh, you can get AI-generated explanations of the actual code base that's running right now, not what it was like two months ago. Cody can also help you write new code in context, you know, generate tests, explain the impact of a refactor before you make it. And in a world like where projects are only getting more complex, like having an AI teammate who can instantly onboard you to get a giant in a giant repo is a huge unfair advantage. That's why Cody earns a spot in the list. It makes working in large, intimidating code bases way more manageable. All right, so the last tool on the list is Sorcery. All right, so what does this do? Well, we've talked about basically a plugin for your editor that can be like your pair programmer, a full-on editor that can be your pair programmer. Then we talked about basically like, you know, an AI-powered documentation, like conversational assistant. Now, this last one really is like, something like code review and basically like making sure your code is good because we got lots of problems like AI can spit out bad code all the time. You need to be a good developer to write AI code. And, you know, you could have a human go through and check all that stuff, which you really need to do, but you could have a preliminary check, right? Where basically an AI is actually like auditing code that maybe another AI wrote or maybe a human wrote by themselves or an AI plus a human wrote. All right, so that's what Sorcery does. It'll basically give you code reviews um, to make sure that the code looks good before you try to ship it. And it's less about generating code from the get-go, more about adding this to the coding workflow. All right, so it's a huge value. All right, so that's an overview of the top five tools that I think every developer needs to know if you're already a developer or you're just trying to become one in the first place. Now, some of you, especially if you're newer, might even be asking like, hey, why do I even want to learn to code in the first place if you can do all this stuff with AI? 
And that's an honest question. But like I said at the beginning of this video, like AI is probably not going to take your job anytime soon, but a programmer using AI might. All right. And that's the key. A programmer has to use it. So you still have to have programming skills to actually be able to make good code with AI. Why is that? Well, because AI honestly gives out bad code at unpredictable times. Sometimes you can do something amazing and in the same breath do something really, really stupid. And you're not going to know what that is if you're not a developer who understands the code and how to fix it. And you've got to be able to like open up whatever the AI gave you and be like, oh, that's not right. Let's fix it. Let's go back and change it. And also sometimes like I find myself using AI to do something and I really, I should have just done it myself. It would have taken less total time in the first place. You got to know when to use it, when not to use it. And that's why you still need to be a developer in 2025 to be effective with AI. And you still need to know AI if you are a developer. So you're not left in the dust when everybody else is having these advantages. So if you want to see how to do all this type of stuff, make sure you smash the like button down below, subscribe to this channel. And if you want to become a full stack developer in 2025 and get at the forefront of technology where AI and blockchain meet the two massive super trends in tech, then I can show you how to do that step by step start to finish over at adaptiversity.com forward slash bootcamp. That's all I've got for today. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.